Hey everyone, welcome to That's Good Denver. I'm your host, Chris Romeo, and today I'll be uh, resuming the series of where I do every NFL division, um, ranking, uh, doing their ceiling of how high I think they could finish and their floor of how low I think they could finish. Um, today I'll be doing it for the NFC West, uh, the Seahawks, Cardinals, 49ers, and Rams division. Um, so, so yeah, it's probably about the second best division in football, I would say. Uh, not quite, like, the AFC West that good, because I think the AFC West is the best division in, fo division in football. But the NFC West is still pretty dang good. You know, you just got the Seahawks, who might not be that good this year. Um, but still a pr pretty good division. Um, yeah, I'll speculate their ceiling and floor, and, um, talk, predict their actual record, and break down each team in this division. That being said, let's get started. And hopefully my computer does not mess up uh, while I, we, I do this video because it's been acting so funny lately and let's hope to God it doesn't act funny. Um, but anyway, uh, starting off in the NFC West, you got the Arizona Cardinals, my old hometown Arizona Cardinals. Uh, I know a lot of people in Arizona and stuff, but so the Cardinals, um, you know, they had a good start to the season for sure last year. They started off like 9-0 and and they lost a few games and they didn't play as well the second half of the season. Still got in the playoffs, but got destroyed to the Rams in the wild card round. Um, Kyler Murray still had a good season and stuff. Um, <clears throat> but then going into this year, um, you know, they have the pieces on offense and they have some pieces on defense. I would say, um, you know, they have Kyler Murray, DeAndre Hopkins, he's going to be suspended the first six games of the season, and I've heard rumors that, like, Kyler Murray's wanted out, or, like, Kyler Murray isn't happy the money he's being paid it, paid and stuff, I like Kyler Murray and stuff, um, you know, there's just a little bit of drama, maybe in the off season. I still think the Cardinals are gonna have a pretty decent season try to make a push for the playoffs you know they do have a tough division um their ceiling for me I I have their ceiling at about 10 and 7 um you know this is if you know the Hopkins suspension isn't as big of a deal you know he missed some games but you know I think he will miss some time um you know it might hurt him a little bit at the beginning of the season and you know, it just depends on how well Kyler Murray plays. 10-7 and seven could still definitely get you in the playoffs in the NFC. Their floor, though, um, out of their floor, you know, if if things are really don't pan out well, you know, there's a lot of people that don't think the Cardinals might do that well this season. I, uh, I'm not one of those people, but their floor could be 7-10. Uh, and 10. Um, You know, that's if, you know, like more drama kind of stirs around with the Cardinals and, you know, um, things don't play out well, but I don't think that'll quite be the case. Next up, you got the Seattle Seahawks. So, you know, everybody knows Russell Wilson leaving, going to your Broncos is gonna play a big impact on them. Um, I'm not sure about, oh, before I get into the Seahawks, uh, some of the Cardinals tough games this season, um, sorry about that, but some of the Cardinals tough games, they got the Chiefs, Raiders, Broncos, uh, the AFC West, um, they got the Rams and 49ers twice, the Eagles, the Saints, maybe the Vikings, um, the Chargers, and, uh, the Patriots, so, yeah, the, definitely a lot of tough games in their schedule, a loaded schedule, but doesn't mean they can't win some of those games. Now, the Seattle Seahawks, you know, they're not gonna not supposed to have a great season, to be honest. I mean, you know, they have a few weapons on offense. I think they have a good receiving core in DK Metcalf and Tyler Lockett for Drew Locke, and he's shown some good signs in Denver. Don't get me wrong, but, you know, I don't think he's a long-term future deal for the Seahawks. You know, they're just in rebuild mode right now, especially after losing Bobby Wagner, two after Russell Wilson. Um... You know, same thing, you know, I'm not saying Russell Wilson is as good as Peyton Manning and Tom Brady, but when Peyton Manning left the Broncos, the Broncos weren't good for six years until possibly this year. When Brady left the Patriots, they weren't good for a year. Then Bill Belichick was finally able to get a good quarterback. So 
if you lose a guy like Russell Wilson, you're expected not to do as good the following season. Um, their ceiling, I only have their ceiling at about 7 and 10. You know, that's if Drew Locke, you know, does prove a lot of people wrong and they're not as bad as a lot of people think. Uh, their floor, though, um, you yeah, have their floor being th 4 and 13, possibly competing for a number one draft pick or a top five draft pick. Um, and, yeah, I just don't see it. Honestly, I don't see a great season out of the Seahawks. And uh, some of the Seahawks' tough games. Um, they got your Broncos for Ru Russell, home Russell Wilson's homecoming week one. Uh, they got the 49ers, Cardinals, Rams twice. Their whole division is going to be tough. Um, they got the Chargers. Um, they got the Buccaneers, the, the Raiders, the Chiefs. And yeah, so a tough schedule for the Seahawks too. Next up, we got the San Francisco 49ers. Um, so yeah, the 49ers, I think, have an all-around built team that's going to be pretty dang good. They have an all-around well-built team. They have some question marks at their quarterback position with who's going to start between Trey Lance and Jimmy Garoppolo. I think Trey Lance should start because I don't think Jimmy Garoppolo is necessarily the answer if they want to, like, get to the Super Bowl, maybe maybe even win it. I think they have a Super Bowl caliber, caliber roster um, if they can get that figured out. Their defense is really good. Debo Samuel's an absolute beast. He surprised me a lot last year. They got Brandon Ayuk and a good running game, a good offensive line. Um, They could possibly even be contending to win this division, uh, depending on how the Rams do. That would be really hard, but their ceiling, I have the 49ers ceiling being pretty high at 12 and 5. Um, that's if, you know, uh, they get the quarterback situation figured out and, you know, uh, it's not as big a deal. Or if Garoppolo, you know, proves people wrong this year. Um, their floor, uh, I don't have their floor being too bad. Uh, I, I would have it about 9 and 8. That still might get them in the playoffs. Uh, it would be borderline playoffs or not in the NFC. But, yeah, um, I see this. The 49ers still having a good year, no matter what their question marks at quarterback are. Um, but then the 49ers' tough games, you know, they have their division with the Cardinals, um, the Cardinals, Rams, and they have trouble with the Seahawks sometimes. And they got the Broncos, uh, the Chiefs, the Chargers, um, the Dolphins, the Saints, maybe, the Buccaneers, the Raiders. And yeah, so definitely some tough games in their schedule too. Um, then lastly, you got the defending reigning Super Bowl champion L.A. Rams. Matthew Stafford going to the Rams last year, getting a Super Bowl in his first try, just like Tom Brady did, and hopefully Russell Wilson does the same thing maybe with the Broncos. Who knows? But yeah, the Rams, you know, they deserve to win it last year. They have an all-around good roster. Their defense is... Stout. Uh, Von Miller did play a big role, and losing him is going to hurt their defense just a tad bit. They they still got Aaron Donald in a good secondary, and they're really good on defense. And you know they got Cooper Cup, who's maybe one of the is a top five receiver this year. Cooper Cup, and you know Cam Akers is a good good running back too. So yeah, they'll definitely be. They're definitely probably the favorites to make it out of the NFC to go to the Super Bowl again this year and the favorites to win this division for sure. Um, their ceiling, uh, their ceiling being 4-13, and 13, I mean 13, I can't talk, 14-3, and three, I have their ceiling being, you know, that's if they pick off right where they left off and Matthew Stafford continues to, continues to improve and, you know, they don't even find difficulties within their, their division. Um... Their floor, though, I I would have their floor being at about 10-7, you know, if they uh, struggle within their division and, you know, uh, Matthew Stafford has a few bad games or something, that probably won't win them the division. I don't think 10-7, and seven, um, but I think that'll still get them in the playoffs. Um, Looking at some of the Rams' tough games, other than the 49ers and Cardinals twice, you got the Bills to start off the kickoff the season. You got the Cowboys, um, the Buccaneers, the Saints might be tough, the Chiefs will be tough, the Raiders, the Broncos on Christmas, and you got the Chargers 
and the Packers will be tough. So you got some tough games sprinkled in there for the Rams, too. Um, so as I predict their record, with that's the ceiling and floor for the, the NFC West. Now as I predict their record, um, as you can see over here, I have the Rams winning the division at 13 and 4. Um, you know, pretty close to their ceiling. Um, but yeah, I have them picking up right where they left off and competing for a number one seed and competing for uh, a Super Bowl title again. I got the 49ers at 11 and 6, probably getting themselves into the playoffs after I predict the other divisions. Um, but going 11 and 6, um, there will still be some question marks at QB with Trey Lance and Jimmy Garoppolo, but the, they still have an all-around good football team on offense and defense. Then I have the Cardinals going 9-8. and eight. It'll be borderline whether they make the playoffs or not. Um, I think Kyler Murray's still going to have a really good year. I think DeAndre Hopkins being out is going to hurt him at, a little bit at the beginning of the season and parts of the season with chemistry. Um, but not a bad year for the Cardinals. I don't think it's going to be as bad as some a lot of people think. But, um, yeah, we'll just have to have to see. And, you know, they have a tough schedule and tough division, too. Then you got those Seahawks at 5-12. and 12. Um, You know, I don't... I think R Russell Wilson's leaving is going to hurt them. They're in rebuild mode for sure. You know, Drew Locke's going to have a few good games, and he's going to have a little bit of success with the receiving core, Drew Locke, or with Tyler, Tyler Lockett and DK Metcalf. But... Uh, not a good season for the Seahawks. And so how I have the Rams going 13-4, and four, I have them winning their first two games before they lose to the Cardinals and winning three straight, dropping two straight at uh, five and four. Um, then I have them winning five straight until they lose one of the Packers. Then I have them winning, winning three straight to end their season. So yeah, pretty consistent season for the Rams. Um, and yeah, they'll be compete for number one seed. Um, and the 49ers have them winning their f first two games until they drop one to your Broncos and drop one to the Rams at home. Then I'm would have them winning two straight till they lose to the Chiefs, beat the Rams, uh, lose to the Chargers, lose to the Cardinals, two losses in a row. Then I have them, uh, going on a little bit of a roll, winning five in a row till they lose to the Vegas Raiders then. End of the season with the win against Cardinals at home. Um, then with the Cardinals, um, I have them dropping their first two tough games, 0-2. Then they bounce back, get an upset win against the Rams. They go on a hot streak win, five in a row, go to 5-2, and two, looking pretty. Then they lose to the Vikings, 5-3, and three, beat the Seahawks. Lose to the Rams, beat the 49ers, lose to the Chargers. So then they lose to the Patriots, and they win one, lose one type thing. They lose two in a row to the Broncos and Bucks, beat the Falcons, and lose the 49ers. So like I said, you know, DeAndre Hopkins being out might hurt them a little bit. You know, I kind of have them going in a pattern of winning and losing a lot of games, but we'll have to see. Then you got the Seahawks. Uh, you know, they lose their first two games, and they bounce back, win two straight easy games. Um, they lose three in a row till they bounce back against the Giants. Lose four four more in a row till they bounce back and um, beat the Panthers. They lose to the 49ers, Chiefs, till they get an easy win against the Jets and lose to the Rams. So I have them mostly just beaten bad teams this year. And yeah, as you can see, I have them going 0 6 against the division, only finishing 5 and 12 this year. But let me know who you guys think is going to win the division this year. Um, how you think it's going to. The division's going to pan out. Like, subscribe, comment. And, uh, yeah, not much else going on in my life. Uh, by the way, the Rockies won three out of four straight against the Padres. They won again today, eight to five. And they won a thrilling game last night, ten to six. They were down three to nothing and six to three at one point. Then their offense just went off and they won the game ten to six. Everybody was hitting well. They struck up 18 hits against the Padres last night. That's the season high. And right now they're like 40 and 48. They're like six or seven games out of a wild card spot going on the All-Star break this weekend or this Sunday. So hopefully they can finish off strong. They play Pittsburgh before the All-Star break. And, you know, hopefully they can keep winning. So, you know, keep me something to do. Watch them this summer. 
And yeah, um, so Rocky's not doing too bad right now. Um, it's not as bad as I thought. And yeah, that's my prediction for the NFC West. Um, but that's it, everybody. I'm Chris Romeo, and that's good, Denver.